Hey everyone, it's Caroline here. Uh, today we're going to do a short experience on uh, being able to soothe the nervous system, really relate to our centers, and if, if be able to expand our heart in relationship to if you have been in a state of survival, in a state that perhaps a trauma has initiated you into a state of fight or flight, and you're finding that you're not able to downshift. Uh, I've received um, some requests since we've been in a pretty um, regional uh, state of trauma here in Appalachia from the hurricane. It's been almost two months from the time this recording and, you know, we're finding our way. It's, it's a new normal, uh, but there's definitely a lot of trauma in the field. There's a lot of trauma in our bodies um, and, and also folks' hearts and nervous systems. So I wanted to address um, how you can work with something that has felt like quite a shock. And of course, it doesn't have to be a natural disaster that we've had here. It can be um, the trauma of the shock of losing a loved one, the shock of losing a relationship, a job, that something that really um, initiates uh, the fight or flight response in the autonomic uh, limbic system. And, you know, it's the, the, as we know, like the nervous system is the intermediary between the subtle energy realms and the body. So it's the way it's our like fine tuning um, radio station. It's the way that we can communicate and have relations with uh, the other worlds. But it's also a way that we have relationship with ourselves that extend past our 3D physical form. And so when we have been in a state of shock and our energy body is rattled, and we're starting to like, okay, slow down the body. We are taking care. It's like the initial shock is worn off and we sit down to meditate or we go um, to open up the, the space for a ceremony. We go to use our tools in the way that we n normally would. And there is a sort of scramble going on. It's like the radio station has static. And so what we can do is really slow things down to be able to open the heart heart on the energetic level in a way that acts as the alchemizer. It's the way that it can alchemize the lower three centers being still stuck in that state of survival and that state of trauma. It's the way that it alchemizes the energies coming in and being able to integrate and then elevate into a state of um, state of healing and a state of being able to then uh, be able to relax, to be able to open, to be able to have communion in a way that feels true and that way that feels sustainable. So this is going to be a shorter one. Um, so be a goodie to have in your pocket when you notice whether it's also before a big uh, meeting or something that you want to be uh, involved in and really that you need your full presence, but you notice that there's a part of your attention that is in a fight or flight response. This is a good one to go into. All right, my dears. So if you want to get comfy as always, I'm going to turn on the music. Just allow yourself to make adjustments, close your eyes, do what you need to do to be able to be present. And closing your eyes if that feels available. Tuning to your breath, the inhalations and the exhalations, feeling the weight of your body on the chair, on the floor. I 
with the next few exhalations, see if you can let yourself be supported. Just a little bit more. Let your bones drop a little. Let your the space in between your cells on the exhale. Just see if you can let go. Be held by the structure. Be held by the earth. There's nothing you need to do or accomplish in this time to, to open, to receive the healing and the grace that's available. It's all around you. of your root center, your base center, right at the perineum. If it connects to Gaia, Mother Earth, beneath you. Allowing for that connection to be wide and strong. of the head, the crown center, linking with the pineal gland, right in the center of your brain. Allowing the petals to unfurl. By doing that, bringing presence to your crown center, some energies start to alchemize, transform, transmute, connecting into that soul light a foot above your head. So that line of connection, that pillar of energy that moves from the perineum up your spine to the top of the head and extends energetically from the top of the head to the soul light, really into the source of creation. Letting yourself rest, nourishment, these healing frequencies. Bringing your awareness to the back of your head. This 
cerebellum and a little bit more inward to the survival brain, the midbrain. We're working with the limbic system as well as the survival system. Just bringing your awareness here, nothing to do, just shifting your energy will shift, or shifting your focus will shift your energy. There's a communication happening from the heart to the brain and the brain to the heart. Allowing the frequencies frequency of love to enter into the energy space bigger force of creation of love, a bigger force of the great mystery at play in your life. Letting the grace that's all around you brain, the left side, the right side, your whole brain. Going down into your throat, into your sacred heart. Being bathed in the elixir grace from the heart down into the solar plexus and your digestive system from the solar plexus down into the second center your reproductive organs and down into your 
our center, your base center, connecting your pelvis, your legs, your feet, your whole body. grace frequency. supported by the earth. Becoming aware of your heart, breathing into the front of the heart and the back of the heart. Becoming aware of your brain, your brain stem, survival brain, relaxed. Notice the temperature of the air around you, taking your time, coming all the way back, sensing the sounds, hearing the sounds in the room, beginning, opening your eyes, letting a little bit of light in, and slowly come back. Welcome back, and I hope you're feeling more grounded, more supported, and that your nervous system has been able to downshift. There's a lot more um, I can go into with the with the workings of the nervous system uh, in relationship to the energetics and what happens when there's a uh, energy uh, field that gets rattled and your relationship to it. But for now. There's a way that, you know, the most important thing is to have your alignment with your nervous system, your energy body, your seven centers on your body, and then the higher centers outside of your body as you move forward. Because, you know, no matter what trauma we've had experience and and where we step back into our worlds and find our way, if we don't have that alignment and we don't have access to our heart because our heart has seized up so much in trauma, right? So if something's going on, especially if it's emotional, which most of the time if we're in trauma, it is, um, you know, there's a way that there's a protection that happens and that's the wisdom of the heart. And so it's a matter of courting your heart to learn to trust and open on the emotional body and to be able to have more of a connection to the wisdom body and that holy of holies that's deep, deep within the heart center that really connects into um, your multidimensional self and the multidimensional realities of love around us. So there's um, a way that tending to this temple first is so important before you go back into, especially if you're a healer or a ceremonialist and working with 
uh, different energies and multidimensional realities. Um, sometimes if we have not been able to tend to the heart and relax and, and let the heart flower again, we can um, overuse our ashna, our third eye center. And so we're re relying on our psychic sense to see, right? So that clairvoyance. Um, but if the heart has not been integrated from a traumatic experience, then we can end up um, going into a scene um, in a distortion, distorted way, or we take a sidestep um, and get into some other astral realms that we are not. It's not for the highest good necessarily. Um, yeah, that's a topic for another time. But I hope this was helpful. And uh, yeah, just, you know, it's a short one. So you can do this before bed. You can do this before if you are you know, engaging with a situation that triggers you um, in any way as well. Um, or if you're going like here in Appalachia, um, before I go, and if I'm going out into the world, we're going to go volunteer and see things that are quite activating. Uh, still, I'll make sure to realign my system so I can be better resourced, not only in my own um, body, but also so I can be of service in a more clear and helpful way. So I hope this was helpful and I will see.